Every second, the world around us is changing. Flying cars, artificial intelligence, instant messaging, and life on space stations all seemed impossible 100 years ago. So what could be waiting for us in another 50 years? We promise you won't have to wait long to find out. My name is Kate. And I'm Talish. And we're going to tell you about the future. Which starts today. An American engineer has created the car of the future. That has speed as well as the unique look. In Russia, they made a 20-ton rail car fly. <sighs> I moved it! A man has also learned to defy gravity. No wings, you know, no fuselage or cabin around you. First, Elon Musk's high-speed tunnel sector has already been built. For another 45 minutes and you'd be in New Delhi. How will this technology change life in 50 years? Do you want to see it right now? In 12 minutes now. Now that is a transportation of the future. A teleportation. Are you serious? Don't be such a skeptic, Kate. And what if something goes wrong? Ooh. What do you, you just do what you usually do, do you? call maintenance and somebody will come and fix the problem. I don't like it. I'm pretty sure something better will come along. This is what cars of the future look like according to big-name corporations. Sleek shapes, smart systems, and bodies that look as if they are leather-wrapped. Reliable, super fast. But this man thinks that automobiles developed by eminent designers are such a bore. My ideas for my projects stem from cars that I see in movies, a conglomeration of different exotic vehicles. The design of this car is as awesome as the Batmobiles. Powerful engines, $500,000, and you have the future right in your garage. This is the most expensive vehicle that we've really put everything together that we have done. Supercar designer Mike Vetter is from the United States. He's a billionaire, a philanthropist, a former diner waiter, and a car fan. Hello, my name is Mike Vetter, and welcome to my shop. And here you will find one of the most unique vehicles that you will see in this shop. This design is called Moonwrecker because of its unusual shape and its body and interior parts that are made out of modern carbon fiber. So here we have the super unique Moonwrecker, the ultra sharp bright red razor and the ever so popular extraterrestrial vehicle, one of my all time favorites. This is a real spaceship. Just take a closer look. It seems like it really soars above the ground. Any fiction writer would dream of this very concept car. And we want to focus on something that's very simple right. and easy to make. The supercar's body is printed on a 3D printer. Ram Kulas was inspired by movies and space explorers. It seems like it is ready to dash right now. But there is a problem. It can only go 30 miles per hour. The electric powertrain can last only 150 miles without recharging. And it will be possible only in the future. The next cars that we're working on, mm -hmm. they would be uh, street legal, uh, you know, real cars. So we're using the, exper the experiment to figure out what we want to do next. For now, this space supercar can be in your garage just for decoration. 
What's this? Is this the transport of the future? Hey, they're a lot better than your supercars that go 30 miles in an hour. Excellent. Let us all bike to the happy future. You'd be surprised, but scientists are already making upgrades to such familiar machines. This looks strange, don't you think? You'd be surprised, but such combinations are already in production. Propellers instead of wheels, a battery inside of a fuel tank, the first flying motorbike in the world is ready to go. So these propellers, carbon fiber, the motors as well, were made for us over here in uh, Czech Republic. Basically, the hover bike is a giant drone. Currently, its battery only lasts for 20 minutes, but during this time, you can fly up to 18 miles. The maximum speed that the bike can reach is about 45 miles an hour. Uh, depends on the weight of the pilot, depends on weather conditions. The actual lift, you can lift someone up to about 200 pounds. These characteristics make Russian businessman Alexander Atamanov keep fit. He invented and tested the hover bike. It's my dream because uh, my father is an ultralight pilot and uh, I'm dreaming about this all my life. Alexander built his first hover bike in Russia. The design presentation took place at the Innovation Center in Skolkovo. This thing can fly up to five meters up in the sky and reach a top speed of 100 kilometers. What? Can it fly? I'm going to go try it out. Yeah, go for it. Now, can you imagine, right, chasing after somebody on this thing? I don't think I'm too short for this. <laughs> I think you can fly it for sure. Now, what's interesting is as soon as the battery on this starts to die out, it'll just automatically land. So it feels like a future today. It does. Soon the whole world was interested in this Russian engineer's development. The Emirates police have already ordered hover bikes. Now Alexander is testing a new hover bike prototype in the US. If no traffic, yes, of course, car is faster and the uh, uh, range is much more uh, than hover bike. But if you have a difficult area, some mountains or rivers, the hover bike is faster. Currently, there are no traffic or sky regulations for such bikes yet. We're going to have to have safety precautions in place for public spaces, uh, much like we do uh, for, uh, that we're building for roads as well and, and, and physical cars also. If we all fly in the sky, we'll have to get traffic lights, road markings, and traffic control off the ground. And what if someone's engine stalls? What if an accident occurs? Maybe for these reasons, air transportation is developing very slowly. And year after year, flying cars are undergoing numerous tests. Slovakia now has the most advanced aeromobile. It can accelerate up to 100 miles per hour on a highway and up to 125 miles per hour in the sky. A full tank can last 435 miles. Basically, it's a transformer with the body of a car and the wings of an aircraft. I love the concept of being able to fly without anything around you, no wings, you know, no fuselage or cabin around you. American engineer and pilot David Maiman has created his own small and mobile transport of the future. This is our JB-11, which is about the, phew, it's been 12 years now in the making, so it's the 11th version of the jetpacks that we've built. Here, you can see Maiman soaring near the Statue of Liberty in New York. Here, he's flying all over Abu Dhabi Bay. There's no miracle, it's just a backpack. The plane that you fly from country to country in, they have big jet engines. These are really small versions of the same thing. There are six such mini engines fueled with kerosene. They are controlled by a joystick. With this backpack, you can go up to five kilometers in the air, and then you have to rush back before you run out of gas. Developers are now trying to fix this shortcoming. children of the future will pack their school bags, push a button, and take off. It's a dream. I bet they'll have a lot of fun. But they won't have other kinds of fun. Like when I was a kid, we used to live a coin on the train tracks and wait for the train to come by. I know, I did that too. You wait for the train to pass by, and boom, 
You have such a sweet souvenir. Oh, but kids in the future won't know this game because magnetic trains don't go on the tracks. Actually, even today, kids in China and in the US have no idea about these games. Just a few years ago, it would take you around eight hours to get from Moscow to St. Petersburg. Today, it took me only half the time. I'm pretty sure that in the future, our trains are gonna be much faster. I came to St. Petersburg to meet with a group of scientists that created a flying train. Let's see what it is. This rail car weighs 28 tons. If you take a closer look, you will see it really floats above the ground. Здесь расположены постоянные магниты. Здесь и там и зазор два с половиной сантиметра. В течение трех лет эта платформа левитирует. I felt so nervous when he put his hand there. It's like putting your hand into the lion's head. Можете сами попробовать. <laughs> <laughs> On the test set, scientists show how the maglev system works. When the repulsion force is greater than the retraction force, the car just takes off. Мы научились формировать магнитные поля, которые держат надежно и гарантированно, что здесь никаких неприятностей, связанных там с со сходом подвижного состава, не дай бог еще каких-то так сказать других, здесь быть не может. Maglev trains are already speeding around in China, Japan, and South Korea. Anyway, these are just passenger trains. Russian specialists are now developing the first heavy-duty Maglev train ever for high-speed cargo delivery. It will move at 500 kilometers per hour. А зачем такая высокая скорость, чтобы было понятно, так сказать, вот просто на живых примерах, чтобы выловленная, скажем, в Охотском море рыба, еще живой, приехала, так сказать, в Москву и на рынке или где-то в магазине, так сказать, а вот она живая морская. It doesn't matter how much the train weighs, 28 or 280 tons. And to prove this, the developers suggest one more experiment. You can move 28 tons with just one hand. It is possible only because of magnetic levitation. And to prove that they are real, look, let's see what happens. Oh, that was very powerful. I'm gonna leave my coin over there and hopefully really soon I'm gonna come back to this train as a passenger. I want your specialty, but without onion. Yeah, 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 thank you. An order from New York. Oh my God, I can't take this anymore. Hurry up, hurry up. Well done. Oh my God, we live in a world where I can order a pizza directly from London and it's still hot? Can you imagine that? It'll be $14,300. Well, that's the only disadvantage. <sighs> Kate, I'm really upset about this future. Come on, it would be so cool to get rid of all of these planes because our trains are gonna be so fast. But people are gonna be so sleepy. Why is that? Think about it. If it's only going to take an hour to get from London to New York, then it's only going to take a few seconds to go from the suburbs to the city center, which means people are going to lose out on those precious extra minutes of sleep every day. Oh, come on. Don't worry. It won't happen anytime soon anyway. Actually, in Belarus, a team of scientists are already working on this project. We're in the Republic of Belarus on a farm just outside the city of Minsk, where scientists are literally hurling towards the future by developing a way of flying on the ground. It's either a cable car or a light rail metro. 
The Skyway is a revolutionary way of transportation, a fast and noiseless line. Nice to meet you. So Brilliant. this looks incredible here. I want you to tell me, how does all of this work? What's, what's happening here? Это рельсовый транспорт эстакадного типа. В каждом рельсе по четыре струны. Это канаты диаметром 15 метров, каждый из которых натянут до 18 тонн. Autopilot cabs fly on cables stretched between steel poles. Anatoly Yunitsky, an engineer and developer, calls them Unibus after himself. This looks incredibly futuristic. Let's open this up. Let's get inside. This space age design is also his idea. Sleek shapes, super solid glass, a powerful electric engine. Whatever it takes to accelerate. Я никого не заимствовал, это мой дизайн, причем я придумал это не как художник, как инженер. Главная потеря энергии это аэродинамика. Потом я учил аэродинамику юнибусов по сравнению с спортивным автомобилем всем раз. There are two types of Skyway cabs. Hanging ones accelerate up to 93 miles per hour. Hinged cabs are more stable. In the future, they're going to accelerate to more than 310 miles per hour. 150 to 600 kilometers an hour. Now, that's a pretty tall order for this thing, but I'm not convinced. So I'm going to see if I can race this to figure out if it can actually go as fast as everybody says it does. All right, let's get this started. That's going off to a good start. As you can see, it's pretty rocky, but uh, I don't know. I'm beating this guy right now, man. 150 kilometers an hour. I doubt it. Look at this thing. It's tough driving out here. Oh my god, it's bad. It <laughs> what? Where did this thing come from? This is ridiculous. I can't drive. This is this is unreal. This road is terrible right now. Oh, these rocks are everywhere. Oh man. Okay. Nah, this is insane. I'm not going to beat this thing. I was so close, so close. But he got me, and you got to hand it to him. He's built something that actually works. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the success in the future. You've built something great, and I really hope it works out for you. The developers are particularly proud of the price. A cable road is 10 times cheaper than a normal railroad. It takes much fewer materials and are a lot easier to build. Это транспорт второго уровня, когда земля освобождается от дорог. У нас отсутствует проблема мостов, пересечения рек, тоннелей, переездов. Well, if the whole planet ends up using this cable system, we will have to rebuild cities or design new ones along the Skyway roads. The perfect city for this new system is Tel Aviv. It's narrow and extended. In circular Moscow, it can lead to a total mess. Вписать этот транспорт в существующий любой город, конечно, это очень сложно. А вот построить какой-то город будущего с чистого листа, да, это было бы, наверное, очень интересно. What a dangerous invention. Why? Why? All right. Look at this beautiful Siberian nature. Can you imagine the influx of tourists? They will destroy our planet right away. Well, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Well, according to Elon Musk, it will. According to Elon Musk? When he first promised to launch a car into space, everyone laughed as well. And now it's out there. Today, he's got another surreal project, but pretty feasible. Technologies like in science fiction movies have already become a reality. In February 2018, Elon Musk was given a permission to build the first section of his Hyperloop in the eastern part of the USA. It will travel at speeds of up to 1,200 kilometers per hour. You can see how we could get from here in Denver up across the Bering Strait between Alaska and Siberia, um, down through uh, China to get to, to uh, Beijing would only take uh, about two hours. Unlike Musk, Daryl Oyster is not known to a wider audience. Although he was the one who suggested creating vacuum transportation, Oster's project is called ET3. Instead of long hyperloop trains, here we have pin-sized two-seats capsules. Mounted to the tube, we have permanent magnets and also at the bottom of the tube at the six o'clock position. And that electrical current is generated by movement in the magnetic field that's generated with these permanent magnets. And um, that's what causes the uh, levitation. 
We can also sit and imagine what a trip on ET3 will look like. Well, let's see, we'll get to New York in about an hour and a half, right? Yeah. Do you want to go down to Smiler's Deli? I would love that. Yeah. They've got the best kosher pickles, do they? Oh my gosh. As we give people more power and more capability, we also give them more capability to do evil things, bad things, terrorist things. Experts have already called this novelty an easy target for terrorists. Just one crack in tunnel's body and the vacuum fades away. The system will crash. However, ET3 is still being tested while the first Hyperloop segment is being built. Moreover, Elon Musk suggested another advanced technology. Here is the ambitious inventor's plan to make life intraplanetary. To fly from Hong Kong to Singapore in 22 minutes, or from New York to Paris in half an hour. Passengers take their seat on a rocket. It goes out of the atmosphere of the Earth, flies along the orbit to its destination at a speed of 16,800 miles per hour. Musk все свои фантастические проекты успешно реализует, да, с отставанием, всегда надо накинуть 2-3 года к его обещаниям, но тем не менее Big Fat Cold Rockets, это он обещал сделать там в следующем году, а она фактически и есть, то есть если он это сделает, то уже мы начнем обсуждать стоимость билетов. А то, что он умеет поднимать ракету и сажать ее в нужное место, а это уже 90% этой технологии, это мы можем наблюдать уже в прямом эфире. So as to the question of Elon Musk, um, project being fact or fiction, uh, is he a genius uh, or is he perhaps just, just lucky? Um, personally, I think on the one hand, he's a very, very good, shrewd business executive. However, some questions still don't have answers. For instance, how long does it take to reach the spaceport? We have to build them far from cities. How can a human survive such terrible acceleration? Not everyone will feel fine in zero gravity. This is not a full list of problems. No one knows what to expect at the end of the journey. Major hall breach. Critical systems failure. Great, I'm already scared of flying, and now what? Am I gonna have a new phobia that I'm gonna be kidnapped by aliens? Oh, come on, Kate. Think of the opportunities this is gonna open up for us. We'll be able to travel anywhere in the world in just a few seconds. All of it sounds way too dangerous. And actually, I have to get my nails done. So, bye-bye, you all. Truly yours, Kate. And I'm truly yours, Talish. And I have to catch a bus now. <laughs> 